Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, we have our weekly look at the numbers, trends, and latest news about COVID-19 with AMA's Chief Health and Science Officer, Dr. Mira Irons in Chicago. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer, also in Chicago. Uh, Dr. Irons, we haven't had to talk about milestones in a while, but it looks like we're about to approach another significant one. Yeah, Todd, we are. Um, we are reaching 600,000 deaths from COVID in the United States this week. This milestone serves as a reminder that even as the number of Americans dying of COVID has dropped from thousands to hundreds each day, the death toll keeps climbing. It's taken about as long to move from 500,000 U.S. deaths to 600,000 as it did to go from zero to the first 100,000 deaths, about four months. Now it's a huge improvement over the one month it took for the death count to go from 300 to 400,000 just last win winter. Looking at the big picture, it's still good news with fewer deaths being reported each day than at any point since March 2020 when the pandemic was still first declared. Well, that is uh, good that that kind of rate has slowed so dramatically, uh, but obviously vaccinations are likely key uh, to the trend that we've been seeing. What's that connection that you're seeing between vaccination rates and death rates? Oh, absolutely they are. You know, COVID deaths are becoming relatively rare in some places that are basically tracking with the pace of vaccinations, which as we talked about last week, varies enormously from state to state. Just to give you some idea of the variance, Vermont recently became the first state to partially vaccinate 80% of its residents 12 or older. It's now lifting all remaining state pandemic restrictions. Um, but Vermont has been very successful at handling the pandemic throughout, you know, throughout the last 15 months. A New York Times database shows that it has reported fewer cases and fewer deaths relative to its population than any state um, but Hawaii. In addition to Vermont, Hawaii and Massachusetts have given at least one dose to more than 80% of their adult populations. Um, on the other hand, however, Mississippi has the lowest vaccination rate with just 44% of its adult population receiving um, one dose. So quite a big swing. You know, I was talking to a, another physician last week on our COVID updates and he was mentioning, you know, you're still seeing folks come into you know, hospitals that haven't been vaccinated and just what, you know, what a tragedy that is to see uh, a death that could have been prevented. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about vaccinations and the progress that we're making this week? Sure. On Monday, the CDC said about 174.2 million people have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine, including about 144.9 million people who are fully vaccinated. Now, if you look at percentage-wise, all comers, all ages, that means 52.5% of all Americans have received at least one dose and 43.7% are fully vaccinated. Um, about 65% of people 18 and older have received received at least one shot. And this is the number that President Biden is looking at to reach 70% by July 4th. However, you know, um, administration numbers are, are less than what they have been. Providers are administering about 1.11 million doses per day on average. And that's about a 67% decrease from a peak of over 3 million reported on April 13th. Gosh, we're so close to hitting that goal. Come on, America. We're closing in on 70%. Dr. Irons, uh, additional news on the vaccine front. We have a potential fourth option. Uh, where the results were announced of its clinical trials this week. Can you tell us more about this new option? Absolutely. Um, we've been waiting for this. Uh, Novavax looks like it could be a fourth strong COVID vaccine option. Um, the company revealed uh, the results of its trials on Monday, and it stated that its two-shot regimen was 90% effective at preventing people from falling ill in a 30,000-person trial conducted when variants had begun to circulate in the United States and Mexico. Um, vaccinated people were completely protected against severe and even moderate cases of illness, and there were no cases of hospitalization or death among people who received the vaccine. The shots also may be the most tolerable yet tested. Side effects included fatigue, headaches, and muscle pain, but reactions tended to be less frequent than those triggered by some already authorized vaccines. Do we expect them to then follow suit with, uh, you know, say Pfizer and uh, submit for FDA authorization soon? 
Yes, but it's unclear when. You know, at this point, our country is not short on supply with the other authorized vaccines. So while the vaccine was one of the six the U.S. bet on early, it might likely have its biggest impact globally. The company said that it may not seek emergency authorization from the FDA until later in the summer or maybe into September. Um, but in the meantime, the company is applying for authorization in Britain, the European Union, India and South Korea, from what we hear. You know, it's likely that by the time Novavax gets the green light from the US, it may be too late to contribute to the country's first wave of vaccinations. But many vaccine experts expect that with waning immunity and emerging variants, we may need booster shots at some point. Um, and the protein based technology used in Novavax may do a particularly good job at amplifying protection, even if people previously um, had been vaccinated with a different formulation. So, this is all speculation. We'll hear more about um, boosters and other things, um, uh, uh, you know, in the future. But, you know, this is good news. So we talked about uh, earlier in our discussion about the milestone of 600,000 uh, COVID deaths. Can you give us kind of a complete picture on where we stand now in terms of cases and uh, the death rates that we're seeing across the country? Yes, um, you know, the current numbers today, 33,475,305 cases and um, 599,960 deaths, just shy of the 600,000 figure. You know, the brief version, um, the situation continues to look reassuring for anybody who's vaccinated. And if I can boldface and highlight those words, that's those are the important words, um, but has become more worrisome for anybody who's not, largely because of the Delta variant. The vaccines continue to work well against every variant, but the U.S. still faces two problems. The first, a substantial share of Americans, close to a third, remain hesitant for a variety of reasons about getting vaccinated. And those unvaccinated Americans will remain vulnerable to COVID outbreaks and to serious symptoms or even death. Second, the Delta variant is spreading rapidly within the U.S. after having first been identified in India and now accounts for about 10% of cases. So this, this Delta variant, these new Greek letters, they, are, 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 they seem to be scarier to me uh, than the, just the numbered ones, but uh, this is serious. Can you talk to us more about the Delta variant and what we uh, can expect to see here in the States? We know that it appears to be both more contagious and more severe than earlier versions of the virus. We're seeing patients becoming sicker and their conditions are worsening much more quickly. That's why many experts are concerned that cases will eventually start to rise as Delta becomes the dominant form of the virus. But again, the one very big piece of encouraging news, the vaccines continue to work extremely well against the variants based on evidence we have so far. You know, the best performing vaccines vastly reduce the number of COVID cases of any kind and virtually eliminate death. The clearest place to see this pattern is Britain, where the Delta variant has spread widely and where the vaccination rate is high. In Britain, there is still no sign of an increase in deaths well after the strain has become dominant. The message is clear, get vaccinated. Well, in addition to that message, which is really the most important, any other key messages uh, from the AMA this week? Um, yes, the AMA has issued numerous press releases and statements as a result of its June 2021 special meeting of the special meeting of the AMA House of Delegates, which is wrapping up today. We've captured all of that news in one place, and it can be accessed either through the AMA website or by clicking on the link in this episode's YouTube YouTube description. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Irons. That's it for today's COVID-19 update. As usual, you can find more information on COVID-19 in our resource center, ama-assn.org slash COVID-19. We'll be back soon with another COVID-19 update. Thank you for joining us today. Take care.